Hey everybody, welcome back to Battle Ready Inc. So today's video for you is going to be my version of a purple deck for the 1.5 format. Okay, this is it's kind of a little bit of everything. Uh, it's nicknamed Purple Good Stuff just because purple just has a whole lot of good things going for it right now. And not really one in particular strategy, so you can really mix and match the cards to your particular play style. So this is my interpret or interpretation of it. This is what I've seen do extremely well in other tournaments where I've seen it played by other players, uh, played against me. Uh, I have never piloted purple. I will go ahead and put that disclaimer out there. However, I have played it like every week since the November release. Uh, a friend of mine, he got into it just first thing and he's been playing it nonstop ever since. So I've played against a lot of different variations of purple. Uh, so this is my take on what really performs the absolute best and what's topping a lot of tournaments out there. Let's get into this. Also, don't forget about our Coromons. This is our $20 Patreon support tier this month. Uh, these are our memory counters. These are all handmade individually by my wife. Uh, they look super cute. They're made out of clay. Uh, they fit perfectly onto your mat. They cover the numbers really well. They look great. They don't roll around on it. They got a nice flat bottom, so they work great for memory counters. Okay, so jumping right in here, uh, the one of the things that I really like that really, you know, really shines for me in purple is its crazy draw power. Uh, I always bragged about blue in 1.0 and how its draw power was just really good. Well, it's mostly just because the draw power was uh, being compared against Red Omnimon. Blue Omnimon versus Red Omnimon. I like blue better because it had all the draw power to really draw into your pieces that made it good. Purple, though, I would say purple's got the best draw power out of all of the Digimon TCG right now. Just because it just there's so many different ways to facilitate it. And in doing so, you always can get into your perfect combo pieces that for whatever situation you're in, no matter what deck you're going against, you have so much draw power that you can draw into the exact cards you need in the deck. And you can always have those on hand to deal with the current situation that you're going against. Okay, so that's kind of the, the whole thought process here and then moving forward from that idea. That's going to be our foundation here. Okay, so just jumping right in here, we're going to look at our eggs here. So they in 1.5, they got the new egg, the Demi Marimon, and it's uh, inheritable here is on deletion, trigger, draw one, then trash one card in your hand. Uh, essentially, it's just a free draw one. You'll pretty much always just get to use this. I, I don't know of a situation in which you really wouldn't so that's really awesome really really powerful here it's not quite so locked down to like blue has a lot of draw ability uh digi eggs however all of them are very like situational and you kind of got to really work with them uh in a certain type of build like the jamming one or uh you know making sure your opponent doesn't have any uh inheritables that sort of thing so this is just super powerful uh, I also did have the, the Pokemon in here. You could possibly drop this. However, purple purple games go a long time, okay? If you play this game a good amount and you played in, you know, locals and tournaments and things like that, you know that when a purple player has hit the field, it's going to be a long game. All right, they are so grindy, so, so grindy. And that's why I wanted the fifth egg was just because of that. Uh, I went with the Pogumon because it's uh, when attacking, you can trash the top card of the deck. Uh, you do a lot of that. You build a lot of trash up in purple, and when you have a lot of trash, it facilitates certain other cards. Uh, stuff like your Beelzemon will trigger if you have a lot of trash, or uh, Piedmon is good if you have a lot of trash. Uh, Lilithmon, uh, your your Matt Tamer. I mean, they're not dependent on. Some of them are on how many you have, but some of them is just like. I like to have a lot of trash, so I have a lot of things to choose from whenever I activate my abilities. So I went ahead and added the Pokemon for that. Next we have the Impmon here. We have him at a 4 of. His is on deletion, trash the top 3 cards of your deck. That same uh, general strategy there is, you know, have a lot of in the trash. He's good for that. He's a 1k, so you can crash him into security super easily. He's pretty much guaranteed to die unless it's an option card or a tamer. So you can always trigger him if you need to trigger him. Also, we are running Beelzemon in here, so being able to just drop a mega 
straight on top of uh, Impmon is so good. So uh, a Mega right onto a ro rookie for that Warp Digivolve, so powerful, okay? So he he's definitely going to be a 4 of in this deck. Moving on from there, we have the Gabumon. Gabumon, I love Gabumon. You can get Gabumon on top of a, a Demi Marimon, and wow. So you have the, the trigger, draw two, then trash one, and then do the Demi Marimon where you draw one, trash one. So essentially, you're kind of like, you know, drawing three, discarding two. So you can always, it's always nice because you can tailor your hand to what you're going against. All right, and I kind of alluded to this in the beginning. So if you're going against, you know, Rookie Rush, you know, it's like, well, I might want to get me a Tamer or a, uh, a blocker out really, really quickly. Because uh, you drop one blocker, you can really slow down Rookie Rush with a single blocker. Two blockers, oh man, it, it, that's a hard game for them at that point. Just two simple blockers. So being able to tailor your hand to fit that scenario is really good. Or if you need to draw into something like, you know, a Trump Sword to get rid of like an Omni, right? That's being able to draw and draw and draw is so good. And uh, going right off of that into the Tapir one, on deletion, trigger, draw one. Uh, super, super common play that I see all the time is turn one, uh, Gabumon on top of the Demi Marimon, right, in the raising area, and then hard play a Tapir Mon, okay? So then when it comes back to you on the next turn, you can crash the Tapir Mon super easily into security, uh, and then Digivolve on top of the Gabumon and potentially crash if, with that if you need to for just so much draw. I mean, that is, uh, I mean, on top of the, you know, the Digivolution draws, but I mean, that's a nutty amount of draws. I mean, four, five, six draws right there in, in by the turn two. I mean, that's not even counting your, your turn one draw, right? If, or if you're going second drawing uh, and then turn two draw again, that's eight draws. It, that, by your second turn, if you're already drawing eight cards in your deck on top of the five you've already drawn, wow, that's powerful stuff, okay? And uh, and we're not even at the rookies yet, okay? So moving on there, I do have the, the Demi Devimon just as our two play cost. I like to incorporate a little bit of two play cost in all of my decks, uh, no matter what, just because you're not always going to be able to Digivolve a rookie, okay? You're going to have to hard play them here and there. And just having that on play cost of two is nice. Uh, you could argue dropping one the De Demi Devi Mon down to one and playing the Candle Mon uh, because they do the same thing. But if you're worried about um, uh, Omni and having multiple names on field, sure. Uh, it's super easy. Just at, drop one De Demi Devi Mon for a Candle Mon. Uh, moving on from there, we go, we'll go finally go into our champions. Uh, I do have the blockers at four of. Uh, most stuff in here, it, it's kind of important to have your key pieces at four of, because like I said, we're trashing a bunch of stuff, which means that it makes you makes it harder to draw into. But again, at four of, you can trash one and still have plenty of time to draw into more. Not a big deal. Also, by setting up multiple copies in the uh, the trash, when we play other stuff that brings them out of the trash onto the field, like Piedmon or uh, Mastymon, stuff like that. You know, our our trash is stacked, so that way we can bring that stuff back out for whatever situation. If we're about to lose, we can bring back, you know, a Valmon or two, depending on what you're playing there, and getting a blocker out, super huge. Uh, next up, we have the Devimon. Uh, same kind of thing. Some A lot of people like to bring out, like, with Piedmon. I use Piedmon as a lot of examples, uh, just because his is the most generic. Uh, bring out, like, one Valmon and one Devimon, right? So... You keep your opponent from killing you with the Valmon, but also, if they can't kill you, you have a Devimon there ready to just retaliation whatever it is that they're about to uh, leave on field for you. So, love Devimon. Also, just uh, in combination with like the Gabumon and the Demi Marimon, I love Digivolving, you know, turn two on top of the Gabumon with the Devimon, and then just killing whatever it is that they left on field, right? Super, super nice. So your your intention is for Devimon to die. Okay, that's his whole thing is dying. Uh, and then taking someone with him. Uh, if you've seen the show, you know, it's very thematic. Uh, but then triggering both of those is super, super good. Uh, also have the, the Marimon there because he's a one cost evolution. And we can essentially do kind of the same thing is uh, a one cost evolution to, you know, essentially crash into something and then trigger our Gabumon and our Demi Marimon. So that's why I like the Marimon, that one cost evolution, so cheap, 
you can do that, attack with it still, and you still have a turn to it, still do other things. So whatever you just drew into out of those three draws you just did, you know, you can still work with it, and that's really nice. Uh, also, the Devimon has retaliation as an inheritable, so even better because you can go up from there into whatever, and your opponent always has to debate. Well, if I want to attack into that, you know, I've got to worry about retaliation or... If I leave that, whatever that is on field, it always has retaliation as an inheritable. So Devimon is just so powerful. If you're playing purple and not playing four of Devimon, I'm very interested to know what you're doing instead because I cannot imagine a purple deck without Devimon. All right, uh, next we're getting up into our ultimates. Uh, we got the brand new Lady Devimon here. Uh, again, more draw power. Uh, when digivolving, trigger, draw to then trash two cards in your hand. Again, we're just tailoring our hand to fit the situation at all times. Uh, we want level, we need some level fives in here, just the new uh, strategy in this deck. It used to be that you had a couple level fours and then just the, uh, the, the Chimera Mons as level five to pop everything else, right? And they didn't play a whole lot of level fives. The new purple is a little more traditional to other decks where we're actually digivolving, you know, from level two all the way up to level six okay and seven beyond and uh, i do have the the lady devil ones here i only have them as a three of uh in total we're only having the seven level fives and i, I feel comfortable with that just because a lot of uh some of our level sixes are just hard play level sixes okay or stuff like beelzemon that can digivolve on top of a level three so when you actually think about it you don't need as many level fives in purple just because they have other ways to digivolve or they just hard play themselves instead. So having a uh, eight count of level fives is not needed for purple. So uh, that's my uh, three count pro uh, process of thinking on that one. Also that inheritable uh, on your turn, once per turn, when, when you use an, an option card, delete one of your opponent's level three Digimon, that is never not good. All right, going on from there, we do have the uh, the Chimera Mons. Of course, Purple loves their Chimera Mon. Just on play, uh, delete one of your Digimon to delete one of your opponent's level five or lower. Level five or lower, okay? I mean, think about that. That is a big investment, a level five. Uh, you're, especially if they're all the way up from an egg state, that's a big deal. That's a lot of turn after turn of evolving over and over to get up into that. That's a lot of memory. And then boom, you just clear it off the field. Uh, like against Omnimon players, deleting their level fives hurts Omnimon players. It really, really does. So, uh, cause they're usually very efficient about their memory and that just really messes them up. So, uh, super, super powerful card. I mean, he's good in any deck. Uh, playing against Shine Greymon, popping a Rise Greymon, like the turn before they're about to drop a shine on you. Ooh, man, that's so good. Uh, you just, you don't even know. Like, until you've been chimera like, as many times as I have and lost because of a Chimera, yeah. Um, super, super crazy. Next up, we're going to take a look at our, uh, our Megas here. This is where purple players really get wishy-washy on how they like their deck. A lot of the stuff I've said before this is pretty like standard stuff. You might change some ratios here and there, but a lot of that stuff is is pretty, you know, almost cookie cutter. Megas though, Megas is where it drastically changes. Uh, it changes so many different aspects. Uh, it can change like your ratios, like I was talking about with the level fives. Uh, if you, you know, if you're not playing a lot of Piedmons or Beelzemons and you're playing other stuff, you might need to bump your level fives and your level fours up. You know, it might be super important to get that evolution chain. Uh, if you're playing a lot of option cards, it might be important to bump your Lilith Mon up to a higher count. Okay, so it just it gets crazy at this point. Uh, every person, I think, plays their Megas at a different ratio. I don't think I've ever seen a purple deck where everyone's Megas was at the same ratio. It's it's that crazy. But in my variant here, uh, I've got the two Piedmonts here. My thought process on two Piedmonts in particular is I want to see at least one in a game, okay? And seeing one in a game is relatively likely with the crazy draw power here. And so I can get that one in my hand and I can hold on to it. If I ever need to trash any cards and I have a second Piedmont, I could very easily 
you know, trash the second Piedmon because I've already got the first one. It gives me fodder, you know, to trash uh, whenever so I can keep other things. Uh, if I trash one or because I have to mill it off the top of the deck, you know, I've still got a, you know, pretty likely chance that I can draw into a second one uh, throughout the game. So that's the thought process of running two Piedmons. He's just so good. So he has retaliation, which is always good, especially in a Mega, which means if someone's attacking into this to kill it, they already are in Mega or higher. So that's super good because you're going to kill it, whatever it is. So they're super desperate. Uh, also, you can attack with it and kill other things that are Megas, right? So you're at that 10K, anything like 5K or less, you can probably run over pretty easily. Uh, and then even if you leave it suspended, you know, th sure, debate uh, attacking into it. Retaliation is going to get you. So he's just a big boss killer for sure. Uh, but the main reason we play him is that on play, get to bring back two level four lower uh, Digimon, uh, purple Digimon, right, from your trash. Uh, on play effects, uh, don't activate, okay? Uh, there's no stipulation on this one, so you don't have to have like 10 in trash first to activate this. You can literally activate this with two cards in your trash. Probably not a good idea, but you could. But being able to bring back, like I was saying earlier, two blockers, just boom, two blockers on field uh, to shut down Rookie Rush. Or if they're uh, playing something like Omnimon, you know, you can bring back one blocker and one Devimon, you know, be able to handle that uh, Omnimon super easily. It's just, it puts you in a good, like, position to push back, okay? You're not going to push, he's a 12 cost, so you're going to have to pass turn. But he's good at passing to give yourself a good next round. You know, if you play a Piedmon, there's a good chance that you're you're substantially going to have another turn. You're giving yourself another turn by playing this. And a really good turn at that, because you're going to have, you know, three, two or three Digimon on field. Uh, so super powerful. Uh, I have the Lilithmon at the one of here, uh, particularly because, one, I wanted just to kind of have it in deck, just to, uh, as one of the, the big Megas that people like to play, I wanted to show that, you know, Lilithmon is hugely popular. Uh, you know, she's like, you know, purple waifu over here. So, she's interesting. Okay, I'm not completely sold on her. If I've talked to other people about her, um, mainly, I don't feel like she's ever been as impactful in any of the games I've played against her as like Piedmon or Beelzemon, you know, those guys. I think they're way more impactful than she is. And now we have Mastimon, who's also potentially super, super impactful. Uh, so, when Digivolving, if... You have 10 or more cards in your trash. You may return up to two purple option cards from your trash to your hand. If you're not playing a super option heavy, then you're not probably going to get as much value out of her as you know a more option heavy uh, deck is. Also, on your turn, once per turn, when you ha when you use an option card, gain two memory. So your stuff. Um, oh, what is it? Night raid. Night raid essentially becomes free to play. You get to bring a. a Rookie back from the trash for free with uh, Lilith Mon. So that's pretty cool. Uh, being able to just get those back, uh, the Trump Swords that you use in the game, being able to get those back and use a second time, that, that's really, really powerful. Uh, I have her in here as a one of, mainly because like I was saying, if you have that draw power like this deck has, then you can get away with playing a one of, and it's nice if you can get it, but it's hard you know, far away from being the goal of your megas here, okay? You have other megas that can also do really powerful things. So she's kind of on the back burner. Uh, if I draw into her and I've got some options in my hand, sure, I'll keep her. If I draw into her and I've got to discard something and I don't have a single option in my hand or in my trash, then there's a high probability that, that she's now in the trash because of, you know, discarding. So just kind of my thoughts on her you know take it or leave it depending on your build okay uh moving on from there Beelzemon, one of my all-time favorite digimon he's like in my top three favorites so of course i'm going to include him but not just because of that but because he is super good okay every purple deck i think right now has at least two Beelzemon, sometimes three Beelzemon. he is that powerful okay uh so while you have 10 or more cards in your trash uh, your Impmon can Digivolve into this card uh, in your hand for a memory cost of 4, ignoring this card's Digivolution requirements. So uh, this is your Warp Digivolve, so you go straight from a Rookie into a Mega. So powerful. I mean, just that alone is really good. 
Uh, the four car four cost is kind of steep, but uh, that's not that's not all he's got, right? So when digivolving, delete one of your opponent's level four or lower Digimon. So not quite as good as Chimeramon, but Chimeramon, you know, you have to delete one of your own to get the Beelzemon. Uh, you don't have to delete one of your own. It's one level less, but you know what's level four? Blockers. Blockers are level four. You go into if you can go into a Beelzemon and not pass your turn. Pop a blocker and then like swing for game because of Beelzemon. So huge. I've seen it done so many times. So many times has Beelzemon dropped on field and deleted the one blocker that the opponent like put all their faith in. Like, okay, let me hard play this blocker for five, right? And then I'll pass it to my opponent. You know, I can block all their stuff and uh, I'll have no security left, but I'll be alive, okay? I can do this and I'll have one more turn and I can push for game the next turn. And then the opponent drops a Beelzemon, deletes the blocker, and then just hard pushes for game. So many times I've seen that happen. It's it's crazy. Beelzemon is so powerful. Um, I mean, and not just level four, but level four or lower. So if you're playing Rookie Rush, right, uh, those pesky V-Mons, right, with their jamming, being able to pop that, uh, you know, pop an X V-Mon, whatever. Uh, there's so many good level fours out there in several decks, not just in Rookie Rush, but so many decks. Again, the blocker one is huge. It's probably the most significant but not the end all be all. Moving on from there, we have a brand new addition to purple. Uh, this is a interesting card. There is several decks out there that are just Mastimon focused decks. Uh, they incorporate a little bit of purple, a little bit of yellow. Uh, this is not that kind of deck, okay? But I did want to include it because I think it's super powerful. Uh, I mean, we're talking on par pretty much with Piedmon without having to, that hard 12 play cost to essentially kind of get the same effect. Okay, so when digivolving, trash one card from the top of both player security stacks. Okay, that already is good. So you get to just digivolve onto her, and essentially it's almost like a free attack, a free security check with like, you know, not even jamming, right? It's like beyond that because option cards don't trigger either. You just trash the cards. So option cards don't trigger nothing. So play the in blue. No Hammer Spark, ooh, that's nice. Uh, played against Red, no Gaia Force, oh my god, yeah. So Massimon already looking really good just for that. Uh, in addition though, uh, then play one purple or yellow Digimon card with a level of four or less from your trash without paying its memory cost. What did we just talk about? Being able to bring back, uh, being, being able to bring back uh, blockers. So Piedmon lets you bring out, you know, like double blockers or a blocker and a uh, Devimon, right? Essentially, Mastimon is going to bring out the one of those two that's the most crucial for that moment. If you need to survive, you bring out your blocker. Uh, if you're not in a situation where you're about to die, bring out your Devimon for a little bit of added insurance of whatever they drop could potentially die at any moment due to Devimon. So that's what I like about Mastimon is because, I mean, we're talking a third of the cost of Piedmon here to essentially kind of do the same thing in a way. You're playing the most important thing. Uh, the reason you're playing the Piedmon is probably for one of the one of the two, okay? So you don't always need to pay the Piedmon for both uh, the level fours. Usually one of the level fours that he's bringing back is going to cover it. The other one's usually just a bonus. The Mastimon is just bringing back the important one. Okay, just wanted to really, really stress that being able to bring back a blocker is huge. Uh, just so awesome. I'm loving Mastimon, honestly. She is so, so cool. Uh, also, just dope artwork. I mean, who doesn't like that? Literally, we're talking uh, Angemon or Angelwoman and Lady Devimon literally merging together there. So rad. Okay, uh, so yeah, she's an include in this. I have her as a two of. Uh, again, ratios is kind of play with it how you like it, you know. Uh, you could argue dropping the Lilithmon in this. Uh, you know, I've thought about it. Drop the Lilithmon or the Lilithmon and then either bump the Beelzemon or the Mastimon up to three. For sure. Uh, the Beelzemon can Digivolve on top of Impmon. You know, that's the like ideal play right there. But you don't have to. You can literally just Digivolve him onto a level five like a normal level six Mega and get the deletion effect, okay? I don't see that nearly enough, 
But yeah, you can do that. Uh, I don't know why everyone thinks you have to put him on top of Impmon. So playing him at a three of for more pops, sure. Uh, playing the, the Mastymon at three, sure. Uh, trash more security for free. Uh, get more bodies on field to push for game. Yeah, Mastymon's awesome. All right. Jumping in here, we're getting into the final sections. Uh, if you have noticed, I have 52 out of 50 cards here. That is simply because I've got two cards at the end that are just kind of, uh, I want to talk about. They're not necessarily included in my build, but I do want to like throw them out there so we can talk about them. Uh, if in case you're wondering, I probably should have like mentioned that way sooner. Uh, but so next we've got the Millenniumon at a two of. Kind of like it playing a Omnimon in an Imperial deck, right? This is far from the strategy of this deck. This is not a Millennium Mon Turbo deck by any means. But you know what? A six cost, uh, kind of essentially a Gaia Force, but better? Yeah, uh, why not? And a body on field. So, I mean, we're talking, you know, Omnimon's equivalent here. Just being able to remove anything off field and even Cranium Mon. Cranium Mon's got that protection for deletion, right? Millennium Mon gets around that. You just put. Cranium Mon to the bottom of the deck, boom, out of sight, out of mind. Millennium Mon is so powerful. He's not even doing multiple security checks or anything like that. He's just a big body on field that's hard to kill, okay? Uh, so he's just so good. He's, he's really good. So at a two of, too easy, too easy. Uh, we have enough draw power, like I said. We can draw into him when we need him. Uh, if we don't need him, we can get rid of him. Uh, we've got Matt, Matt Ishta. This is our memory fixer for the deck. Uh, so, you know, if you're at two or less when your opponent passes to you, you know, puts you up to three, or it forces your opponent to play a certain way that's not optimal, right? They're going to plan to always put you at three memory, right, if they can, or might put you at four or five just because they can't quite put you at three perfectly, but they don't want to put you at less than three, right? So they, they play these bigger costed cards that, you know, they're losing out on the Digivolve, they're losing out on that draw power and, and things like that. So, memory fixers are just really good for that. Also, on play, return one purple Digimon card or purple option card from your trash to your hand. Again, we're playing, we're trashing so much in this deck that, you know, maybe at the time you trashed that Millennium Mon early game that you didn't need. But now that it's late game, crap, I need that back. I can play my mat and just grab it back out of the trash and then use it. Or, say, they, they committed everything. And, uh, and they finally got Millennium on the trash, boom, I just get it out of the trash and I can use it again. You know, just so many different things. The Trump Swords, uh, Matt is just so good. Uh, Digimon or options, literally anything in your trash that you want, you can get one thing back to your hand, the perfect thing. You have a stack of like 30 cards in your trash, there's a probably good chance that there's at least one copy of every single card in your deck in that trash. So, in that exact situation, you need that one certain card. So instead of just trying to rely on Heart of the Cards and draw it, shh, play Matt. I just get it right out of the trash and get it right to my hand, no questions asked. So Matt, super good. Uh, next up, we have the new Mimi, which all turns, so both players' turns, uh, or all turns if you're playing like a, uh, a 2v2 or something. Uh, when a player uses an option card, you may suspend this tamer to gain one memory. So, uh, if you're playing any other deck except for blue, uh, you know, you can essentially make all of your option cards one less cost. So your Night Raids become a one cost. That's really good. Nothing like playing a rookie for one cost. That's so powerful. Uh, but also, you know, anything your opponent does, this is when it gets really good. When your opponent does anything, uh, they've always got to take in the fact that Mimi's on field, so they got to be careful not to pass their turns. Like, oh, let me play, you know, this one option card. That'll put me at zero, right? And then I can push for game. Let me just Gaia Force that blocker, and then I'll push for game. And then they, you know, suspend Mimi, and then put you, pass it over to one, so it's back to their turn. Mimi is so good. Only a two cost, and you can get so much value in a game out of Mimi. Just super gnarly. Uh, against Blue, though, you turn off their Hammer Spark, right? If they have a Hammer Spark in hand, Mimi basically makes it pointless to use. Oh, that's so powerful. That's so good. Uh, just absurdly, absurdly good. 
Uh, they have to play multiple Hammer Sparks, which that's very suboptimal. To have to play two Hammer Sparks just to get one memory, right? So Mimi's so good. And just, again, she's useful against everything. She's useful for your own deck because you're going to play your own options, as well as she's going to shut your opponent down for most of their option cards. So good. Definitely one of the, the highlights of the new includes from 1.5 is the, the Mimi. Loving the Mimi. Uh, next up, we've got Trump Sword. Most people all know Trump Sword. It's the purple version of Gaia Force. You got to be a little more trick, uh, like you know, careful with when you use it. It's kind of tricky. Uh, but man, nothing like getting Trump Sword revealed when an Omnimon attacks and then returns level six to hand to unsuspend itself, so it can attack again. But before it can attack again, it gets Trump Sworded because it unsuspended itself. Oh my God, that is so brutal. I've been there. I felt it. It hurts. It hurts deep down, okay, to see that happen and to experience it. Uh, so moving on from there, we've got Night Raid. Night Raid is just an, a cool include in this deck. Uh, it allows you to potentially play less rookies if you want because you can bump up the Night Raids. So you can play one purple level 3 Digimon from your trash without paying its memory cost. Uh, no on-play effects, of course, but, I mean, that's so good. Uh, also, hitting it in security, activate this card's main effect. You know how many games I've lost? Because uh, I would I hit into a night raid in security and I didn't plan on them having that extra body on field and now they push for game that two play cost right to get a three play cost back so play a night raid get like a uh, an impmon on field right and then boom Beelzemon right on top of it and then wipe something out or uh, you know bring back a tapir mon so you can get more draw power that sort of thing. Or, you know, Gabumon to digivolve something on top of, so now we get even more draw power. Night Raid's just a really, really cool card. Combine it with, like, Mimi or Lilithmon, and Night Raid is super, super good. Alright, this video is getting super long, so I'm going to keep saying super, but uh, right now I'm going to go into just kind of like my flex stuff. I wanted to kind of like honorable mentions. Uh, the Gazimon here, all turns, your opponent can't gain memory except with Tamer effects. Uh, just more and more lately, more decks are being able to play the memory game. Used to, it was just uh, blue. In 1.0, blue had Hammer Spark. That was pretty much all you really ever saw for the memory gaining effects. Now that 1.5 is here, and then that further and further, we just see so much more memory gaining abilities. Uh, and then Gazimon just shuts it down. Kind of like a Chumon in black. It just shuts down all these memory gaining effects, which is really, really nice. Especially, like I said, Rookie Rush is really, really popular right now. So being able to shut down Hammer Spark is uh, good for that matchup. He just really depends on kind of your meta, I would say. And that's a you call, okay? You could argue dropping your two cost, right? Your Vanillas for like two copies of Gazimon. You know, you draw into him and so you only use him if you realize that you're playing against a deck that's going to have a lot of memory gaining, so then you can go ahead and get him on field. Uh, if you're not playing against a deck that you know doesn't have a whole lot of uh, memory gaining abilities, oh, Shine Greymon, right with Kari, right shuts down Kari. Did uh, did want to mention that because Shine Greymon's so popular right now, shuts that down. So that's really good. Um, so just kind of want to throw him out there, just just something to think about. Uh, your call. Uh, next up, I've got the, the new Demi Devimon. This is the promo, right? The tournament <coughs> promo for your locals. Uh, on play, trash the top two cards of your deck. If you're playing a whole lot of stuff that's really reliant uh, on having a lot of trash, you know, if you're playing several copies of Beelzemon, three or heaven forbid, four. I don't think anyone's playing four Beelzemon. Uh, but if you're playing three Beelzemon, if you're playing multiple Lilithmons, like two or three Lilithmons, you're in an option heavy deck. You know, if you're playing lots of these guys, then yeah, I would probably incorporate the Demi Devimon somewhere in there. Uh, again, you could drop the Vanillas. I think the other three that we already have in there, the Impmons, the Gabumons, and the Tapirmons, those are so good at 4-up. I cannot even fathom dropping any of those guys for these. I would much rather probably drop the Vanillas uh, to put in these two copies of either of these. Um, just, just what I'm thinking there. Uh, just approach it how you want. I did want to just kind of mention they are very, very good. They just don't work in this particular deck, I don't think. Uh, not for my strategy. The Demi Devimon is very specific. Uh, the Gazimon is more of a personal meta call on whether or not you should use it or not. 
And that's the total deck. Uh, let me know what you thought. You know, this is a super long breakdown of what I think, the, how the deck performs. So let me know what you think. If you think anything you know, seems off or if you really like it, you know, let me know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and comment uh, as well as subscribe if you haven't already. If you enjoy this type of content, I try to put it out as much as possible. So definitely subscribe. Also, if you really enjoyed the content, check out my uh, Patreon. I have a link in the description below for it. You can get access to my Discord server, as well as your, if you're a Dragon Village M fan, account takeovers where I help you out with your account. If you're a Digimon fan, I've got monthly giveaway. Well, not even giveaways. I've got monthly merch that's specific to Patreon. Stuff like memory counters custom made this is the uh, the baby form of vmon here there's gonna be more in the works also so lots of memory counters all kinds of awesome digimon merch so definitely check out that tier and if you're just all out crazy there's other tiers if you're that dedicated uh, as well as check out my teespring i've got awesome merch there you know official battle ready ink merch awesome phone cases for you digimon fans out there uh they've got them for iphones as well as uh samsung's so they are super sweet if you've seen the the last digimon movie that's where these are from i had a friend of mine custom make these so that way they fit perfectly on these phone cases they look super good so definitely check those out but at the end of the day if you can't do any of that just like i said like the video that helps a ton and subscribe it doesn't hurt but it helps me so that's what's the, the real benefit. And as always, I'll see you next time. <laughs>